Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Destiny and welcome back to another video in the hotel management series using Django. And in this one, we're going to go ahead and start working with building out the user and the profile model. That's what we'll be doing. Hopefully you guys will enjoy the video. Do make sure to drop a like, consider subscribing as it really mean the world to me. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I will do is go ahead and open up the project. Remember the project that we were working on, the HMS tutorial, I actually added it to this folder over here. I will go ahead and open this up in my Visual Studio code, right click, show more options and open with code. Or you could open your Visual Studio code like this, come over to file, then open folder and select where the folder is and go ahead and click select. So if you click on this, then you go ahead and select folder and that should open it up. So after you've opened it up like this, the very first thing that you want to do is open up the user auth app, come over to the models PY and I will zoom this in so you can see everything that's going on. Hopefully this is visible enough. Then in here, we have to go ahead and start writing the custom user model and also the profile model that we will be needing. Let's go ahead and import a couple of things that we will be needing. Firstly, I will import from django.contrib. I think that should be auth.models import abstract user. Okay. And after that, I think for now, that's pretty much everything that we need. When we need something else, we will come over here and get it. Now, one more thing that I think we need is this from shots UUID, from shots UUID dot Django fields. We need to go ahead and import the shots UUID field. And um, for now, that's everything that we need. So let's go ahead and start off by creating a user model. I will call this one class and call it user. So this user over here, you could call it whatever you want. For example, you can call it custom user or you could call it um, Django user or you could call it user model. But I actually prefer calling it user to stick with naming convention. So after calling it user, then you need to go ahead and inherit from the models dot model. Okay, models dot model. That's because this model over here has the fields that we will actually be getting or be extending. Now, this is the, the normal way to do this if you're trying to create a new model. Let's say you're trying to create a post model or a profile model. This is the right way to do it. But this time around, we are trying to create a custom user model, which means we want to add our own fields to the custom user model. The custom user model has fields like the first name, the last name, the email, the username. But in this one, we want to go ahead and add in full name. Okay. So how do we do that? We need to tell Django, hey Django, we are actually trying to um, extend the custom user model or the user model that already exists to add our own field. So the way to do that is to grab the abstract base user and put it in here. All right. So whatever field you pass in here will be added to the abstract base user, to the abstract, abstract user, not the abstract base user. Now, the very first thing that we want to do is go ahead and create um, some fields like the full name. I will say full underscore name and this should be models dot char field and the max length should be, let's say, um, 500 for the full name. And actually, it can be null, null, true, blank, true. OK, and after that, the next thing that we need is to go ahead and add in some of the fields that we need. So I will add in the username field. This should be models dot char field and I will call the max length again. Let's say 500 and this one, you can actually make it not true, blank true, but let's just leave it the way it is. Let's just make it unique it should be true. OK, that is because we don't have we don't want multiple users having the same username. So you make it unique true. And after that, we also need email. This one will be models dot email field. And let's just say unique should be true. All right. As simple as that. And we also need a phone number field. This one will be models dot char field. Now you might be thinking, why not use an integer field or a positive big integer field? So depending on the country that you are staying or in the country where your users will be registering from or your target country, different countries and regions have different ways of formatting mobile numbers. For example, if you're here in Nigeria, your number will start with plus two, three, four. Then you can put in whatever number you want to put in there. But I don't know. Let's say if you're in the US, I've actually seen something like plus one, then it's going to be like a bracket or something. 
and maybe 616 then you could go ahead and put in the number i don't know if that's if that's correct but if you're using an integer field there is no way to actually put in brackets and things like that that is why i will recommend you use char field so you just can add in whatever symbol or letter or text alphabet or number that they want in here but all you should do is just make sure that you limit it to i don't know maybe 100 so max length let's just say 100 and actually you can still say null should be true and blank should be true and in case you don't know what null true blank true means it pretty much means that this field can actually be empty and django should not try throw any error saying hey this field should be filled in all right i don't know if you understand so this field over here when you add a null true blank true then when this field is empty a user doesn't fill this in django will not throw any error because we have actually told django it's all right if a user does not pass in any information over here and after doing this we also need one more field that will be the gender and for this one i will say models dot char field so we don't really need the gender field, but I just want to add it in so you guys can see how it is to how it looks like to actually add in your own field and customize your user model. I will make this 100. I think that's a little bit too much. Let's just make this 20. Okay, 20 should be should be enough. You can make this 100. You can make it 20. It's up to you how you want it to be. And after doing that, we need to actually make this a choices field. That means we don't want to allow users type in either they are male or female. We actually want to give them a drop down that it can select the agenda from now how do we do this in order to achieve this you want to create a tuple over here which will hold the options that you want to add into that model now i'm going to say gender should be equal to parentheses then in the parentheses i will go ahead and open up another parentheses then i will open up um i will open up double quotes in there or single quotes then i'll type in my option so the first one is female and over here, I will put a comma, then type female. So whatever that shows up here, this will be the option that you want to show a user. So you can see something like one, then this will be female. And the next one, let's say two, then this will be male. Male. All right. So what your users will see is female or male. They will not see one or two. So you can actually go ahead and put in maybe a code to to recognize that this is a female and also a code to recognize that this is a male all right but i, I want to leave it um as it is without using any number or code or strings let me just call this female and male and that should be enough now all you need to do is copy the gender tuple that you just created come over to the gender field and you want to add a new attribute called choices then just paste that in as simple as that now, if you want to give a default gender, in case the user does not select one, then you can go ahead and say male or female or over here, you can actually add in something like order. All right. Order. Let's just put this down here. So we can say if a user does not actually specify the agenda, then we'll just put this as order. OK, I think that's pretty much it for now. One more thing that we need is the OTP model. So I'm going to say models dot then char field. This should be MXLE. Then I will say 100. That is even too much. We cannot send OTPs up to 100 characters. 2010 is enough, but let's just leave it as 100. And it's compulsory that you put null as true and blank as true. That is because when a user creates an account, by default, this should be blank. Then after a user creates an account, we automatically populate this OTP and send them an email that has the OTP in here for them to verify the account. And after their accounts get verified, we will then go ahead and clear out this field. So if you are clearing out this field, if it's not null, true, blank, true, Django will throw an error because this field should be filled in. It must be filled in. That is if you did not specify null, true, blank, true. And after we've done that, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and tell Django the username field to now use. So hopefully you guys have already seen this. When I tried logging into the admin section, they requested or the application requested for my username and password to log in. But I don't want to use username and password to log in because that's actually quite unrealistic. But in modern sites and applications, they actually request for your email and password to log in. So how do I make this application work with email and password instead of username and password? Now, the first thing to do is just go ahead and define a user name field over here. And now the username field should be the email field. 
What we're pretty much doing over here is overriding the username field and setting it to the email field. In case you want your users to log in with their phone number, just add in phone number over here. If you want them to log in with their full name, add in full name over here. But one thing is recommended. If you want users to log in with their phone number, please do make sure to make the phone number unique so that two users will not have the same phone number. All right. And after you've done that, we need to go ahead and pass in required field. This one is actually for the admin in case you want to create a super user or something like that. So you want to create a super user. We actually need the username field to be in there or you're trying to actually build out your own custom authentication or something that requires this required field attribute. Okay. Without adding this required field username, if you want to create a super user, you will notice that it will not prompt us to enter a username. And for creating a super user, I think it makes sense to enter your email username, password one and password two. So do make sure to add this in as it is. Now, after you've done this, we just need to go ahead and define a Donda STR or a string representation of this object. I will pass in self in here and I will go ahead and return self dot username. So whenever a user gets created on the Django admin list page or maybe in the ORM or somewhere else, we want to represent the objects of that user with their username. So you can actually represent the object of the user with an ID or you can represent it with your full name. OK, so whenever you call that user, what you will get initially is their full name. I don't know if, if that makes sense. So let me just call this as username. I will show you guys this when I actually start using it. Now, I think we're done with the user model. Let's go ahead and create the profile model. I will define a new class. I will call it profile and I'll pass in models the model in here. This time around, we are not adding in the abstract user because we are not trying to inherit it from any previous model. And after you've done this, we could go ahead and put in the things that we want. For example, I need the ID of the user. And this one is just my own way of doing things. I actually like adding a custom ID field to whatever model that I create in case I need that ID to actually identify that model in the future because I don't really like relying on the inbuilt ID that's attached to a model. I actually like that being on its own than using my own ID field. So I will call this PID. You can call this field whatever you want, but I just want to call it PID, which means profile ID. Then over here, I will call the short UUID field that I imported when we started the video. And I will say the length of uh, whatever ID that it's want to generate should be seven. And I'll say the max length, max length should be, I don't know, let's say 25. And the alphabets that it should use, alphabet should be equal to, then you can add in whatever alphabets you want in here. Let's say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's up to you if you want to do that. Let's just stick with one, two, three. So what is this line of code going to do over here? Whenever a model gets created, it will automatically create a PID field for us and populate it with seven character from any of this over here. So it randomly grab this and pick out seven different characters from here and populate it into this model. It's as simple as that. Now, the next thing that we need is an image field. So image is going to be models dot file field. So I actually like using the file field model in the image or whatever field I want to use that has to do with uploading a file because most images actually have different extensions. For example, if you are using the image field and you're trying to upload an image that has a WEBP file extension or an AVIF, then Django will throw an error saying that this extension is not recognized or something like that. So we need a way to actually let Django accept all these extensions. And the best way to do that is by passing in the file field. Now we need to upload this to somewhere. Whenever an image gets uploaded, where do we want to upload them to? Let's just say upload them to a field or a new folder called image. So if this folder doesn't exist, Django will automatically create a new folder called image and upload whatever image that the user is trying to upload into that folder. All right. But this is not the most efficient way to do this. That is because our fo image folder will have thousands of images 
that belongs to different profiles. How about we do something like create fo a folder for a particular user that is trying to upload an image and whatever file or image or documents that they're trying to upload, put it into their own folder. I think that is a more better way of organizing things. Now, how do we do this? All we need to do is just come over to the top over here and we will create a new function and call it user underscore directory underscore parts. And it will take in two parameters. One is going to be instance. One is going to be file name. All right. And after this, we need to go ahead and get the extension of whatever file that they're trying to upload. So we will say extension, then file name dot split dot split. And we want to split the file name at dot. So an image will look like this. An image is going to look like this. Let's just say this is the, this is the, you know, title of an image or its name. It will be image, blah, 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 dot JPG. In an image, there is no way to, there is no way you will see double dots in different places. It must be one dot. So what we are trying to do is this. We're trying to say, hey, Django, <coughs> grab the file name of an image and actually cut it where you see the dots. So split the image at where you see the dots and grab every other thing that is over here. Now, how do we tell Django to grab every other thing from the dots or after the dots to the right? That is by coming over here and we need to say minus one. So when you specify minus one, Django will then grab this extension over here. Let's say this the extension is as long as this. Who cares? Django will grab whatever that's in here immediately after the dots. So that is how this works. Now, after getting the extension, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and form the file name. So I'll say file name, that's just a variable, should be equal to, then I want you guys to follow along with this. So I will open up double quotes like that, and I'll say percentage s dot percentage s. So these are just placeholders. Then what I want to do is go ahead and fill in those placeholders with something. And to do that, I will come out here, put in a percentage sign, open up a parenthesis, and I will say instance. That is this instance that will pass over here. I will say instance dot user dot id. And I will also pass in the file name. So let me explain what went on here. We defined the variable file name. We created two placeholders. That means we want to automatic, automatically populate this placeholders with some information that we will get later. Then after doing this, we actually specify this, which pretty much means that whatever we pass into parentheses over here, we will get or will override this placeholders here. This first placeholder will get overridden by this first over item over here or this first data or information that we are getting. This second placeholder will get overridden by this one over here. It's as simple as that. Then finally, we need to go ahead and return. Then this is where we now create the folder with the user ID or full name or whatever you want to use. Let's say I want the folder to actually look like this. User underscore one for the first user or the user with ID of one. User underscore two for the user with ID of two and so on. All right. So how do we do that? I will create user over here and I'll say underscore. Then I need to go ahead and populate or adding the the actual ID of the user. I will open up um, braces in here and put in zero. And also I will say slash, then I'll put in one. So this is pretty much placeholders too that we will override with some sort of information. How do we do this? Come out here, put a dot format. And all I just need to say is instance dot, then user the ID, as simple as that. And also the file name. So what, what does this mean? This will go ahead and create a new folder, user underscore the ID of the user. If it doesn't exist, then it will put in this file name that we just formed over here into that folder. It's as simple as that. Now I will grab the user directory parts and instead of uploading profile images to a folder called image, I will just paste this down here. As simple as that. Now, the next thing I want to do is go ahead and define a default picture. In case a user hasn't uploaded the picture, we actually need some sort of default placeholder picture to use. So I will just say default.jpg. 
okay and you can also pass in null should be true and blank should be true which means that in case a user don't want to upload a profile picture it's totally okay they can actually leave that field blank okay now after doing this let's go ahead and create a foreign key of the user back to this user model which means that we want to actually link this profile to this user so whenever a user creates an account they must need a profile to do this i will define a new variable user and I'll come over here and say models dot, then I will use one to one field. So what does one to one field field model actually means? It pretty much means that one user should have one profile. It's as simple as that. What does foreign key means? So had we were using foreign key, it pretty much means that one user can have many profiles. Okay. But what I want to do over here is just go ahead and make this one to one field. And over here, I will pass in this user model that we created, which means we are now linking this profile to this user model. Don't worry, you guys will see how this works in action when we start running our server and making migrations. Then after this, we need to go ahead and add in an on underscore delete should be equal to models dot cascade. What does this mean over here? It pretty much means that whenever this user model that is linked to this profile gets deleted, what do we want to do? Now, if you add in models.cascade, that means whenever a user that owns or whenever this user model gets deleted, for example, let's say Destiny owns the user model above. Now, if Destiny gets deleted from the database, we will automatically delete their profile model. It's as simple as that. Now, if Destiny gets deleted and you don't want to delete their profile model, all you just need to do is set this to null. And take notes, if you're setting to null, you must also add another attribute that is null should be true. Okay? But right now, whenever a user gets deleted, I don't think it makes sense keeping their profile. Let's just go ahead and delete their profile. So are we adding the cascade? And after that, we need to go ahead and put in the full name, the phone, and the gender. You can actually grab this. Remember that we've written them before. The full name, the phone, the gender. I will grab those and just paste it down here and make sure to fix your indentation and everything should be working perfectly well again now the next thing that we need is adding a country so i'll say country should be equal to models.charfield now remember that we've been writing models.charfield throughout this tutorial so to save ourselves some time we could just copy one of this and paste it down here and just change the phone to country it's as simple as that now you could go ahead and duplicate this in four places and change up all this so I'll say city and I'll say state and finally address. All right. It's as simple as that. But change up the address to actually have or to contain a thousand characters. Because most of the time, address might be actually very longer than the name of a country, city or state. And after doing this, we need one more thing or I'll say two more things. That is a way for a user to actually verify the account. So in case you actually want users to verify the account using a national identity card, like um, a driver's license or an international passport, then we can go ahead and add in those fields in here. So I'll say identity type. What type of identity will they be using to actually verify the account? And remember how we did the same thing for the choice field initially? The choice field was this gender over here. I will just grab this and replace it with this over here for the identity so i'm doing this because i have already done this and i don't want to type all this out again now we need to create another tuple for the type of identity that they want to use copy this and paste it and i will call this one identity identity underscore type now what are the types of identity depending on the country that you are in you can add in different types of identity for example i am in nigeria we actually use national identification card over here or national identification number actually and um, we also use driver's license driver's license and i think we also use international passports okay so after doing all this then you need to also go ahead and populate it with the informations that are over here Then finally, you need to grab the identity type tuple 
and replace it with the gender one that we have over here in the identity type field. I don't know if that makes sense. Now, by default, if a user did not specify their identity type, let's just say over here should be none. But if you don't want to add a none, yes, you want to leave it as blank if a user does not specify, then all you need to do is remove this default over here. Then automatically, if a user does not specify their identity type, it will take in the field none. I want you guys to also add in null should be true, blank should be true. So in case a user is not yet ready to verify their account, we don't want to break their profile or show an error. But if you want this to be compulsory, then you should go ahead and say null should be null should be false, blank should be false. Or you can as well remove this to make it required. And after that, one more thing that we need is the actual image of the identity type. So it's an identity, right? That means a user will have to give you some sort of an image of the driver's license, national identification number, or the international passports. So for that, we're going to go ahead and I will grab this file field. Remember, we had that before. And identity image should be equal to the file field. Now, we are still uploading to the same place, user directory path. And for this one over here, you could just say id.jpg, OK? And null can be true, blank can be true. As simple as that. Now, one more thing that we need is for a user to add in their social accounts. I just need Facebook. That should be null true, blank true. And also, actually, I need this to be URL field. So they should add in the URL of their Facebook handle. And also, I think I need Twitter. You can add in whatever you want in there, but these are just the things that I need. Okay. I will remove the max lens that they should take and a user can actually specify whatever they want in there. Another thing that I need is the wallet of the user. So the wallet of the user is actually linked to their profile. Now this will be models the decimal field and decimal fields does not take in max length. Rather, it takes max digits. Okay. So I'll say max digit should be equal to 12. So if you're adding max digit should be 12, that does not mean that a user can only upload um, or that does not mean that a user can only have at least $99 in their wallet. No, that means a user can have as much as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That means a user can have at, at most 900 billion of whatever currency you want to put in that wallet. And after that, you can also go ahead and specify decimal places. Normally, currencies actually take two decimal places, which means, let's say it's USD, it should be something like 4.56, okay? 4.56, something like that, or 4.50. So adding two decimal places here means that you want to actually be able to accept two things at the, at the back over here. If you make this 21, then this can go as far as 21. I hope that makes sense. So I will add in just two, and I think that should be okay for us. Now, for uh, if a user creates an account by default, they should not have anything in their wallet. So let's make the default amount in their wallet should be to be 0, 0.00. Make sure that you add in 0, 0.00 because we have two decimal places in here. And after this, we're almost coming to the end. We need one more field verified. This will be models dot boolean field, and default should be false. So by default, a user should not be verified. Now, if this is changed to true, then we give them something like a blue tick or a blue badge or something like that. That means they have a verified user. So one thing that we need here is the date. Models.date time field and auto now add should be true. What does this mean? This means that as soon as a user profile gets created, we want to automatically create um, a date that the profile was created for them. That's simple as that. Now let's go ahead and create a couple of things. For example, how do we want to order the profile in the admin section? Or I will just say ordering should be equal to, let's order the profile by date, all right? So the latest profile will be at the top. Let's also define a string representation of the profile object. I will say self in here, and we will not we will not say um, if self dot full underscore name, then what do we want to do? So if self the full name, then we're going to go ahead and return. Let's just put this in the formatted string, F formatted string. I will say self dot full name. 
But what if a user does not have a full name? What do we want to do? In this case, there should be an else. And I will say return should be in an F formatted string self dot user dot username. It's as simple as that. And that will bring us to the end of this over here. And um, I think that's pretty much everything that we want. In the next video, we, we can go ahead and work with signals, which means we automatically create a profile for a user when they create an account. Or you know what? Let's go ahead and do that right now. So what I will do is I will go ahead and import post save and receiver. So I will say from Django dot db dot models or signal db dot models dot signal. I want to import. Um, let's start off by importing the post save. I need that. And um, I think for now, that should be everything that we need. Let's just go all the way to the bottom and create the signal. So I will say define create, um, create user profile. And I will pass in a couple of parameters. First one is going to be sender. Next one is going to be instance. And we also have created. And finally, we have the keyword acts that we will be using. And I want to check if created, which means if a user has been created, what do we want to do? We want to create a profile for them. So profile.objects.create. And if you're saying profile.objects.create, it must take in this one-to-one -one field over here, which is the user all. There will be an error. That means if you're creating a profile, each profile must have a user attached to them. Now, profile.objects.create, the user should be what? Equal to instance. Now, we need to go ahead and save this profile. So, we'll define a new one called save user profile. Then, this one will take in sender. It will also take in instance. And it will also take in quags. All right. And after this, I will say instance.profile.save. That means we've now saved the user profile that just got created. Now we need a way to tell Django to actually run this command as soon as a user gets created. Now for that, let's use post save. All right. So post save, then we'll connect it with those functions that we just created now. The first one is create user profile. And the model that we want to interact with will be the user model. The next one over here, remember, it's called the save user profile. The model that we want to interact with is the user model. It's as simple as that, and we are done. Now, we need to go ahead and run our server. But before we do that, you might actually see a couple of issues. I will go ahead and run py manage py, make migrations, actually make migrations, then migrate before we run our server. Now, it says alphabets. That means we've got an issue with this over here. It's all alphabets okay so the short uid field actually need alphabets not bets without the s okay so run py manage py make migration one more time and now we should get this error that says um the related name is not defined for this so how do we fix this you need to get back to the um i think we need to get to the settings py open up the hms prj come over to the settings py and just do this anywhere you want. I will just do this um, here. Okay. Let me do this somewhere here. I will say aut underscore user underscore model. And I will call this one. Remember, we have a, a folder called user aut. I will say user aut dot user. Okay. So what we are pretty much doing here is telling Django how to find the new user model that we just created. And telling Django to find the new user model that we just created pretty much means that we tell Django that the new user model that we just created is in the user odds folder and it's called user. So it will look for a class called user there and it will make it the, the authentication user model. Let's run our py manage py make migration one more time. Now, as you can see, we are getting a different error. So you can clearly see that we are actually getting this unhashable type list over here. And if you take a close look, you see that this is kind of pointing us to the username field that we created in the model. Let's get back to the model, get back to this place. Remember where we created this initially and let's remove the list from the username field. We just need one single information over here. Now let's run pymanagepy make migrations one more time. 
Now, what did, what is it trying to say? He says max length is too small to fit the longest value in choices. All right, that makes sense. That is because in here, in the max length of of this, remember identity type actually has long words in here or long characters. So we need to go ahead and change this to like 200, okay? And after that, let's run PyMan HPY make migrations one more time. And as you can see, it's created the model for us. Let's also go ahead and run my grades. My grades. And they should go ahead and migrate this for us. Okay, we got an error. It says inconsistent migration. Okay, the admin initial is applied before its dependencies. User auth 001, this, 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 and that. Now, one of the ways I usually like fixing this error is this. I will get to the settings py, and um, what I can do is just go ahead and comment out this, so I can comment out the Django Contrib admin, and also in my URLs, I comment out this also, and I run pymanhpy migrate again, and what do you notice? It creates this for us. Then I can go ahead and un uncomment this, okay? And everything should work well. Now I can run pymanhpy run server. Now our server should run well. And finally, we need to go ahead and register the model that we just created in the admin py. So to do this, it's quite easy. All you need to do is firstly import the models that you will be needing. Dot models, imports the user model and also the profile model. And after doing this, we need to go ahead and actually configure this model. You can extend it if you want by creating a custom model to actually add in the fields that you want to the model page and list, display, filter, editable, search fields, and things like that. I will say admin dot model admin. And let's start off by adding in the search fields. So we want to actually add a search feature. What fields do we want to search by? Let's say full name and let's say username. That should be enough for me. And also list display. What fields do we want to display there? I will say full name and I will also say user name. You know what? Let's actually go with, go with username for the list display. For the first one, username. Then you can add in a full name if you want in here. And um, we also need an email. We also need phone. I need, not we. Maybe you don't want to actually add all this to the list page. And finally, I need the gender. And with this, I think I'm pretty much done. I could just grab this and um, put it down here. But instead of the user admin, this one will be profile admin. And I need to search by, by full name. I think that's enough for me, only the full name. And if, in case you want to search with the username, you can say user underscore underscore user name. So this is a lookup over here. We grab the user field that's in the model and look up the username in that um, actual model. I will go ahead and get rid of this and put in the, the full name. Instead, let's actually put in, okay, yeah, we can still go with full name. Let's go with user and um, let's go with verified. Let's see if the user is also verified from the list page. And I think that should be pretty much it. Let's go ahead and open up port 8000 on our browser. Open this up and I will go ahead and log in. Okay, let's see what it's saying. It's it it's needs an email, destiny at gmail.com. I will log in. Okay, let me go ahead and create a super user real quick. Maybe I forgot the one I initially used. PyManagePy creates super user. Now we should ask for my email and I will say destiny at gmail.com at gmail.com. My username, I will just say Desfix because I already have a user called destiny in there. For the password, I will say testing tree to one. And again, I will repeat the same password testing tree to one and this should be working well now. So I will have to log in with destiny at gmail.com and this should work. Now we cannot see the user and the profile model here. That is because we have not yet registered it. To register it, call admin.site.register, pass in the user model, and also pass in the profile model. Wait for this to reload one more time. Refresh your page. Now you can see the two. You open up the user model. This is what we have. You open up the profile model. This is what we have. But we actually need a way to get um, these fields that we created show up over here. 
Then what you need to do is copy this and add it at the front of this. Also copy this and add it to the front of this. Now wait for the model to reload one more time. Refresh the page and there you go. This is now what we have. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and learned something new. As you can see, we have created a fully functional custom model and created a profile model. And over here now, you can add mo a new model if you want or a new profile if you want for a user. For example, if I come over to user and I try creating, let me just say testing to one as the password and the date join now and all this. Let me just call, let me say Sammy as the username. Sammy and let's say the email should be um, Sammy at gmail.com or that's let's say gender should be male female as you can see the drop down and when we save this we should now automatically see that a profile gets created for the user semi and if you open this profile up you can see the semi's profile that's pretty much it hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and learned something new in the next one we're going to go ahead and start working with something new and i think that should be registration user authentication and hopefully you guys will learn a lot of things in that video to make sure to drop a like on this one, consider subscribing as to really mean the world to me. Check out some of the courses in the description below. One of them should actually help you become a better developer in Django. And until the next video, my love, peace out.